So welcome to the April installment of the London Project. I apologize for being so late. I blame testing season, quite frankly. So the main thing I was going to learn how to do in the month of April was learn how to write a script. Conveniently, um, the month of April is also Script Frenzy, which is where you try to write an entire script in one month. That is 30 days. This is my first time doing Script Frenzy and coming out of it and unsuccessfully. I have a couple tips for those who have never done it before like I have. So here we go. Tip number one, start early. Now to clarify, I don't mean start writing your script early, I mean start planning. For instance, start planning on what kind of script you're going to do. Are you going to do a screenplay, one that's meant for the stage or a TV show? Figure that out so you have some sort of guideline as to where you're actually intending your play to go. Also, it would be a good idea to start outlining possible ideas so you'll know what you want to do and where that idea is going to go by the end of your script. Tip number two. I recommend keeping a snack with you while you're writing or typing or however you decide to record your script. Yeah, so that one's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, next tip. Tip number three. I suggest that if you are a night owl by nature, I suggest that you do most of your writing by night. You'll be more awake, or you'll be awake longer at least. And you'll be more opening to actually getting something on the page and your reward is sleeping. However late that would be. Tip number four is know your ultimate goal and split it into manageable pieces that you can accomplish every day. So, for instance, if you were going to do, let's say, 100 pages as your ultimate goal, you divide that by 30 days and you get about three and a third pages. So you could round that up to four or however you wish to split that up, but either way, it's roughly three and a third. Tip number five is write every spare moment that you can. Um, I've had lots of experience with that in the month of April. Um, because of testing season, or test prep, excuse me, there isn't a lot of time to actually sit down and write for hours and hours on end because of everything that's just going on in life. So it really helps if you just sit down every time you have five minutes or something, get a couple words written out, get an idea down, and then you won't lose it and you won't get frustrated later on. Tip number six that I didn't do so well on, but I think would have really helped, is planning ahead. Um, it would really, I think it would really help if you checked your schedule beforehand, knowing when the day of your test is and knowing what you're going to do in school or college, work, whatever, and knowing what you're going to be doing for the rest of the week so you can kind of plan time to set aside and just write. I feel like that would have really benefited me, but unfortunately I did not get around to doing that. Tip number seven is pay attention to your deadline. I will tell you that I spent pretty much all of the last day of Script Frenzy working on my script up until midnight when I had to convert it to a PDF and submit it. And that's not a fun time to spend. Um, it's, it's frustrating, it's nerve-wracking, you're like, oh my god, I gotta get this all done and you know, it, nothing feels like it's getting done fast enough. Just avoid that if you possibly can. So I've just looked back at my Script Frenzy page, and I just thought I'd kind of walk you through what actually happened. So, here I'll show you. Here's mine. My initial goal was um, 50 pages. And as you can also see, I only finished 16 pages, which amounts to 32%. So do I feel like a failure after this month? No, not really. Um, I got something done, and yeah, I feel good about what I actually did get done. I'm pretty sure I did more than I did for NaNoWriMo, which ended up to being 30%, so um, I'm moving on up, huh? What I'm disappointed in, though, is month of April I was doing writing series a series of one-act plays, meant for the stage, and I found out this year that they are discontinuing the one-act plays at my school. So these will not be performed this year or next year or the year after, maybe college, there's always chances. That would be awesome. I'd love to get these things edited and do something with them so my month didn't feel like a total waste. 
The second thing I did this month that was not planned was I learned how to make duct tape shoes. Yeah, jealous. So, with the help of Ezra, um, she came over to my house and we decided to have duct tape projects. So, this is kind of what we went through. First, you find a piece of cardboard. Then, you find some scissors. And you might also want a pencil or a marker or some kind of marking device. You put your cardboard down on the floor, you put your foot on top, and you trace around your foot. After that, you take your foot off the cardboard, and using your scissors, you will cut what you traced out of the cardboard. And you're going to do this for both feet, because you want two shoes, I'm guessing. So after you've cut out both patterns for your feet, you're going to find some duct tape. It can be whatever color or pattern you can find. Um, I happen to have teal color, red, and purple in my house, so we used those. So you wrap duct tape around your shoe, and you cut off the excess when you're done, and you do that for both shoes, or both bottom parts. So after that, you take whatever color duct tape you want, you're going to rip it off the roll, and you're going to put, depending on what kind of shoe you want, you're going to put a toe in it. And then you're just going to keep going around, mimicking what your typical shoe would look like. And you go all the way like that, and then you, if you're into decorating, you can switch colors. You could decorate it as much as you want. And this is, um, this is a cartoon version of what I decided to do. So this is what um, my duct tape shoes look like in real life. They are quite comfortable, they stay on my feet, and I'm fairly certain that they are waterproof, but that theory has yet to be tested. Uh, so yeah, I highly recommend duct tape shoes. They look like clown shoes, but they're incredibly comfortable and you'll never regret it. Just, um, it wouldn't hurt to try. You're the only reason I keep on